Hello everyone and welcome back to another Babylon Irons video. Myself and Mike today, and it's a controversial one. It is a combined XI ahead of the West Ham Arsenal game. Can't see how many Arsenal players will get in, to be honest, Mike. But um, yeah, oh, we'll get into it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <fine. laughs> yeah, but we're going to break it down and go through it live. And, you know, you can cook us in the comments and on Twitter as well um, once this goes out. So let's get straight into it, Mike. Let's switch over to the layout. Oh, we've already got Ariola in goal. Let me just take that out. Um, <laughs> Let's start with the keeper. A few to choose from. Ariola, Fabianski, Ramsdale, uh, David Raya as well. Who are you picking out of those four to be uh, your number one? Yeah, I'm going to apologise to West Ham fans here. Don't get excited. I'm not going to be picking a lot of West Ham players because I think it would be disingenuous to do so. Um, I'll talk up our players as well, but let uh, I'll get that down now. Um, but yeah, I think Ariola's been a fantastic shot stopper this year. However, I do feel... a, a a better all-round goalkeeper is Raya. I think he's his ability to distribute, uh, to command the box. He's been quite, he's done that quite well this year. Um, and you know, he's dislodged uh, Ramsdale. I would say relatively easy. I know there's rotation between them because that's yeah. what Arteta's like to have done. But I do feel Raya is a is a top quality goalkeeper. And the fact that it's a loan, I think, with an option to buy. I don't think there's much in it between him and Ariola. I think from a shot rise distributions are a, a bit higher than Ariola's, and I think Ariola's shot stopping is a bit higher. So kind of comes down to personal preference. But yeah, I, I'm not yeah. going to argue against Raya. Um, cool. Right, goalie sorted. That was nice and easy. Um, <laughs> it's simple. Right back. A few options here. Obviously, you could go with someone like Kufal, um, even like Ben Johnson on our side. Other than that, there isn't really too many options. Uh, and then you go to Arsenal side, they've got Tommy Asu, uh, they've got Ben White there. You know, they've got a few players that are filled in at right back. So who would you pick for that right back position? I think if we're going to do this, let's say what our expected style is going to be. I think if we're going to do a combined team, I think it needs to be more attacking, which is why I would probably... I think it's just based on the player, the players in that position, really, isn't it? That's what it is. Yeah, it's I, think, I think Ben White's a good defender. I don't think he's a good enough centre-back, which is why he's gone to right-back, because yeah. he's a very good uh, defensive right-back, which allows Arsenal to invert and play, and essentially go to free at the back and etc. So he gives them good flexibility in that regard. Uh, and he doesn't necessarily offer as much going forward. I do quite like Tommy Asu. And there was a period where I really wanted West Ham to sign him because he played both yeah. full-back positions. Again, a good player. But I'm actually going to I'm actually going to put forward Soufal, just purely on this year with the numbers he's put up um, at right back in terms of number of assists, etc. We know mm. he's never going to score. It's just it's just written in the stars. Soufal will never score regardless of the positions he ever gets himself in. Um, yeah, but I, don't know. I think if you're looking at a team that's potentially going to go forward and attack and that could take advantage of maybe a player you would have on the right-hand side, uh, I think he would be one that I would go for. I know mm. that's probably that's controversial. I understand it. If any Arsenal fans are going to probably be receiving it that idea. But yeah, I think with Kufa, it, yeah, it's, it's, tough. it's tough with Kufa because, uh, you know, midway through the start of the season, he was really, really good. I think he yeah. were like five or six assists. Um, you know, he was playing really well. And then he started to drop off again a little bit, which is why people are maybe hinting towards Ben Johnson again playing um, over him. Now he's, well, now uh, he's going to be back for suspension from this game, actually, Kufa. But I don't know. I, 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 out of out of all of them, Tommy Asu is my favourite player out of them. I, I think you know what? I'm happy to concede on Tommy Asu. I do think Tommy Asu is is a quality fullback, and I do think he's been maybe a little unlucky, a bit more versatile as well. Than, yeah, than Ben White and Cooper. Ben White's been used over him, but you know Ben White is a good player. I'm not saying that he isn't. I do prefer more more marauding fullback, which is why I've kind of went pipped for Sufal. But yeah, I, I do like Tommy Asu as a player. I do think he's a good player. Do we need to debate the centre backs or should I just put them in straight? No, away? I just think we just go straight for Arsenal centre backs. I yeah. don't think there's any debate at all. You know, Salah Best centre back pairing in the league for me. At, at this point, yeah, absolutely. Um, they've they've been great, and you know, I don't think you can say much about no. Giving enough superlatives for uh, Saliba this season. He's just been great. absolutely he's class. To me. He's class. I'm going to say Emerson here. Um, yeah, I, I was just about to say there's, there's a few there's a few options. So. I know Arsenal fans will will argue this. Um, I, I don't think they would argue Zinchenko, <laughs> but 
you know, I think with with the injury Timber had so early on in the season, I know there was a lot of hype around him. He was obviously filling in in that left back position. Um, potential to be better, yes. But as a left back, Emerson's been unbelievable for us since yeah. since that. Again, we've said it so many times since that Conference League final, he has been outstanding. You know, consistent seven out of eight out of ten performances uh, each week, and he just offers so much more going forwards than the rest of the world. Like this is talking from a West Ham perspective, he, he offers so much more going forwards. Than a lot of our midfielders do, and a lot of our central midfielders do. And I know, I know. He's he's the type of player that could easily invert, like like a Sinchenko, go play a midfield. He, he's technically very good, and and defensively is where it's where he surprised me more. I think when we first signed him, again there was kind of limitations in the fact that we didn't want to play him in a back four. He couldn't really defend in those situations. People were saying he's maybe lazy. This season, he's kind of disregarded that. I think he's been excellent one v one defensively. Um, I think against Saka, he was really really good in the reverse fixture. So, yeah, for, I mean, Emerson has to go in here. I mean, we've, we've got a West Ham player in there, so I can be happy now. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be a tough one, this this midfield three, because there's a lot of options. I, I find this midfield three and the front three really easy, in my opinion. Really? Really? Yeah. Let's, start, already... let's, let's start with the defensive mid. Let's, let's, let's have an anchor in there. So yeah. you've got Declan Rice, obviously, of Arsenal, um, Thomas Partey, Alvarez, really. They're, they're the main three, and maybe mm-hmm. Calvin Phillips, if you want to include him now. But out of those four, is there is there a clear winner for you? I, I think, you know, as much as it pains me to say it, uh, Rice, you know, yeah. we talked about him last year, and yet many years, has been one of the best, if not the best, defensive midfielder. Oh, oh this hurts to put him in. This really hurts. <laughs> this flooding it, it back. It's disingenuous to all of a sudden say, no, no, it's, it's Eddie, Eddie over him. Um, Eddie yeah, he is better. He is year. better. Um, mm. From a pure defensive point of view, Eddie is better. Uh, however, from an all round, don't, don't know about that. Don't know about that. I, 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 yeah, I just think in a defensive situation, I think he's got he's got more calmness about him. Also, we've been playing more as a centre back and more a centre back at a first team level. I think Eddie does shade it slightly. Declan Rice is brilliant at recoveries, which I'd say is different yeah. to Eddie, and I think that's the thing. When we yeah, think yeah. about Rice, his recoveries are fantastic and brilliant, which is what we often put down as to. Oh, it's defensive. That's why it's so good defensively. However, I think Eddie's a better defender, a more aggressive defender, but Rice is incredible at recoveries and reading the game and yeah. also his, his ability on the ball and to drive with it. It makes him a far more rounded individual. Yeah, no, I, d- I do agree. I think, like you mentioned, he's more aggressive, Alvarez, you know, that. I just think with Rice, he was just so good at getting the ball back, reading the ball, reading the game so well. Um, and you know, from a, from an anchor point of view, from a defensive point of view, there's no there's no other DM I would want than Rice um, mm. for what he does. And I think he's shown that at Arsenal as well. So this is where it gets tricky because I kind of let's go with two eights um, on West Ham side. You've obviously got Thomas Suchek. Let's just disregard that straight away. Um, <laughs> And then you've got, obviously, Lucas Paqueta, who's been playing out wide on the left. So it might be that, you know, you're saving him for the front three. But you've then also got, um, you've also then got James Ward-Prowse, who has been really, really good for us this season. He's got over over 10 uh, GA now for us in the league uh, or all, all competitions. So, again, another really solid performer. You've then got Arsenal side of things. Um, obviously, Martin Odegaard plays in there. Uh, and they've got a few other options as well. So who would you have as your two eights in this team? Because for me, it's... Paqueta Odegaard, um, that's who I would pick, but I don't know if you're in agreement. No, 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 absolutely. That's why I'm saying this midfield is just an easy pick. There's just, we already know, if we were to talk about this in terms of a a team dynamic, we already know Lucas Paqueta and Rice can play incredibly well together and they already work incredibly hard. Odegaard, again, has such great guile. And I think if you have that free as a midfield free. Yep. (sighs) Crazy. (laughs) Crazy balance to that, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, that's three players that will work hard. That's three players who can find a pass. And you've got two players in Paqueta and Odegaard who will take risks in terms of their passing. Yeah. And Paqueta brings out a little bit of that maverick off the cuff type of football, which I think suits having a team dynamic like that. I think Arsenal could re- like Ar- the way Arsenal lined up at the moment. I think a lot of their frustration through through creating chances in open play has been because they haven't really, they don't really have that number eight, like next to well, right. The other one, the other player we missed out is Kai Harvitz, who's been playing in that position. He's also playing. Yeah, as, not for yeah, me. But for me, not for me. Uh, uh, 
He's more of a sign for me. Have so I wouldn't. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't even have him in midfield. I understand what Arteo was trying to do, but for me, it's just. It's just not going to work. No, I, I. That's what for me that free is. Is it? So it's that's all. That is a world class midfield free, really. And I think, yeah, as I was saying, Arsenal <laughs> are missing that link at the moment. They've obviously got Odegaard who. Plays a bit further forwards. They probably don't want him dropping as deep as he does. He likes to play in the pockets a bit higher up. Paqueta's slightly different. He likes to drop deep. He's more industrious from def- from a defensive point of view. And like you say, he'll take risks. I think, you know, you look at this. Brazil. You know, let's not forget, yeah. he plays in a double pivot with Casemiro. Exactly, so. yeah. He's like doing it. a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that midfield, I don't, I don't think there's too many complaints for that. Front three could be interesting. Let's start with... Striker, who you put in striker? Bowen. Correct answer. That's exactly what I was. I think. <laughs> I think there there really isn't a dispute. I obviously wanted to get Bowen in this team. I think when you um, look at, he scored yes. more than all of Arsenal's uh, front three combined. I think I believe it is something stupid like that. It is, Probably close. Yeah. It's it's an incredible statistic, or at least it was for for what for a while. He had outscored an entire front three of of theirs. So. To not have that player in, and who was also doing this a lot in away games. I think he had what, six, seven games in a row yeah. away from home. He'd scored as well, um, playing in an unfamiliar for me a position, arguably, because um, he'd only ever really played that as off of a centre forward rather than as the main centre forward, really, um, even when yeah. he was at Hull. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, it's Bowen. He's, yeah. I think he's a colder finisher than, uh, you know, Jesus. Um, much who, much better finisher. Yeah, and Aziz has got incredible movement and he's a very good player. However, I think, yeah, I think if on. you've got a striker, you need someone you can rely on who's going to be cold in front of goal when you need to. And I think Bowen has that when he needs to be. I also think, I don't know if you, how you feel about it, but I think Bowen's intel- like match intelligence is underrated. I think people see, like you say, the industrious side of Bowen, obviously scores goals, can play strike or right wing. But like you say, that that movement is very, very difficult to do naturally. Like you can't, there's only so much you can kind of train a player to do. Bowen's instinct to run on the lines is unbelievable like we saw it for the conference league final goal he, he'd done it in multiple times yeah. we, we've said it before we prefer Bowen out on that right because he can make that out to in run between the fullback and the center back and he just times it so well I think in the again in the reverse fixture against Arsenal uh, in this fixture against Arsenal last season I know it was kind of a punt forwards from Kera, but Bowen's movement in behind was was fantastic and that volley again we, we talk about the finishing the, the, the volley was 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 world class as well so yeah it's exactly what you'd want from a striker I think we, we've said it before. Bowen's best position is is right wing. Um, but again, to, to to kind of get in this team and uh, to fit everyone in, he's definitely the best striker option available. So, yeah, that leaves the the left wing and the right wing. Um, let's start. You know, let's just do both at both at the same time. Because Starboy that, times two. That's all I'm saying. You you should know who that what that is. <laughs> but I'm saying Starboy times two is, is yeah. the wing positions. I don't. Yeah. I don't think it's even up for question. I, I'm not having any of this. Oh, Martinelli, no. Just just no. You know, Completely Saka, agree. right side, Kudis, left side. It, it, for me, it's not a question. If you're talking about effective, effectiveness, goals, assists, threat, Kudis has been nothing but consistently uh, a threat in every game. His carrying is incredible. He would, he should be arguably not in a West Ham team, let's be honest. Same with Paqueta. Yeah. And even Bowen at this point, they should not be in a West Ham team. They should be in a team that's in the top four or at least a very... I, I think you're disrespecting West Ham a bit there. No, no, no. no. But if, if we're, we're talking about in terms of the size and status of West Ham. Paqueta, I agree with. Uh, Kudus has obviously come to the Premier League for, you know, for the first time. He's now showing that quality. And, and you know, Bowen, Bowen's been with us a while. He's, he's, he came from the Championship. He's now showing that quality, similar to what Rice did when he broke through. So I think out of those, yeah, Paqueta... Oh, yeah, I'm reason saying about Bowen because you know there is interest from the likes of Liverpool, and there have been others. Yeah, uh, much further ahead of us uh, as as a kind of team. cost them a lot of money though. Going to cost them yeah, a lot. Yeah, it, it would cost them a king's ransom. It cost them something close to what uh, was paid for Rice, I think, for West Ham to convince them to get rid of Bowen. And I think yeah. even Kudus, where you'd be looking near on, uh, you know, 70, <laughs> 60, 70, 80. We're talking yeah. now. I, I think that's that's how it is. And, you know, that's not to say, I know I said, well, it's really hard when I said a bit about Martinelli, but 
you know, he's a good player and he's quick. However, he's not going to give that same that same threat consistently that Kudus has. And I've said it, man. I've said it. It's... I've said it to my. I've said it to my Arsenal friends. <laughs> Martinelli really ain't for me, man. He, he ain't for me. I I would much prefer Kudus to play in that front three. Like you say, I think he's, he offers a lot more threat yeah. from different look... areas of the pitch than, than Martinelli. And if you look at it this season, I don't. I don't think anyone, hand on heart, without you know, tinted glasses, can actually say you would have Martinelli over Kudus at the moment. No. When you look at how definitely not this season. No, no, and exactly. Time will tell as to whether that is a outrageous statement. And Martinelli goes on to then nope, be. It's not. <laughs> at this point, he doesn't. I'll tell like, you now, it's not. <laughs> this is gonna is gonna score goals wherever he is. Hopefully, he does it for a very long time, at West Ham. But to have scored as much as he has already and to have an impact as he has already uh, yeah. in a short period at a new club, um, in a team that doesn't necessarily have the ball as much, um, doesn't necessarily create as much as others, what he's been doing is, is incredible. And, you know, again, the fact that Bowen's been doing the same, it, it's incredible that they have been doing so well and yeah. been so clinical uh, with chances, obviously Man United game aside <laughs> for Bowen, yeah. but you know, when we've had chances, by and large, those two have taken it. And exactly, you know, yeah. and when we look at the right hand side, you cannot not have Saka. I think a stat came out today <clears throat> saying, I think only in the last three seasons, only Saka and uh, Salah have like twenty six goals and assists. Um, you know, over the last three seasons which is a phenomenal statistic. And I know Saka's never really viewed as a goal scorer or, or even much of an assist maker, I think, sometimes. I think that's sometimes a great system, which is a bit crazy. Um, he just causes havoc everywhere he goes because he's skillful, he's pacey, he's a very good footballer. Um, yeah. But he's one of those ones that when he doesn't have a good game, he's then looked rather down on, I think, which I think is often a bit of a trait we do with a lot of English players if they... Uh, Oh, it's just yeah. I think I think it's just football Twitter in general now as well. Like they'll if it's like a big player underperforming, it's it's you know get the comp out. Uh, you know Saka's highlights. It, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's just it's just part of the game. But you know this is this is our team. Um, four West Ham players in there. I reckon there could have been a couple more in there. Obviously the goalkeeper position, the right back position as well, maybe up for debate. But I think the rest picks itself. Um, I really do. I think there's a good blend here. And I think we've done well to get four four players in in this combined XI. So I, yeah. I don't think we've been uh, over the top in getting those four in. I think those four. Uh, I think we've justified it pretty well get, as well. Could get within that team, or if not, other top teams anyway. So yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, let us know uh, in the comments what you think, what your combined XI would be. Are we horrifically wrong? Let us know in the comments. And, and of yeah. course, we're horrifically wrong. We're in a <laughs> yeah. social media age. We're just so horrifically wrong because someone yeah. will tell us we know nothing based on what we put out. Absolutely. It's <laughs> going to be going to be the way, but it is what it is. Bit of fun. Um, and yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Um, leave a like on the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And Mike, until next time. Come on, you Come on your eyes.